Now, since I started this channel, a question that I've been getting asked a lot is how do I afford to go to so many music festivals? I've been going to like one festival, sometimes two festivals a month. Haven't seen Bear Grylls probably since Lost Lands last year. So, no, I saw him at Bisco. No, no, saw him at every... I've gone to too many festivals, dude. And it really does get expensive. And I wanted to make a video today talking about some tips and just tricks that I have learned and developed over time and just some inside information on how to make sure that you guys can save money on going to festivals when planning big trips, day trips, and even local shows. Can I get a year? I'm the festival finesse. Can I get a year for next gang? What is good? Thank you guys for tuning in once again. For those of you who are new here and don't know me, I'm the Festival Finesser. This is my channel. A channel that evolves around music festivals and live music going experiences with a focus and concentration on dubstep and rhythm. Play some fucking rhythm! If you're not following me at a festival day by day, you probably followed me at a show in New York City for the night. And if you're not following me at a show or festival, you're probably sitting with me here at this desk getting life hacks, trick tips, any words of advice that I can give for you guys to make sure you have the best music festival going experience possible. Now, planning and affording music festivals can get very overwhelming because a lot of things that go into planning for a music festival. Between tickets, travel, hotel, food, gear, all these things will probably tally out to be around $1,000 in total. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my God, $1,000? That's so much money. I can't afford that. I have a minimum wage job. I still can save you money. I'm never going to be able to go to EDC Las Vegas. Where? Well, I'm here today to tell you that I went to EDC Las Vegas in 2017 working as an assistant manager at a movie theater, a low-end job, and anything is possible if you set your mind to it. And that's one of the first points I want to give you guys is set a goal and make a plan and figure out how you're going to achieve that goal because you can't really go anywhere until you have the steps to do so and it really comes down to making a sacrifice this is one of the biggest tips I can give you guys is you're gonna to have to sacrifice your money and your time you're gonna to have to sacrifice your time in many ways you know you know hanging out with your friends or working more you know for EDC Las Vegas for that trip I didn't have a car at the time and I was working late and the bus didn't run late you know I have to take the bus to and from work and the bus would not run on certain nights and I would skate to and or from work a seven mile skate to save money on an Uber because I was not trying to spend money on an Uber with a couple months leading up to EDC. I wanted to save as much money as possible and that's what I did. A small sacrifice I made so that I could have the best EDC experience that I possibly could have. Damn, that's where we're staying. Oh my God. And that experience alone is kind of what inspired me to start this channel. So I think it worked. <laughs> During the winter in New Jersey, there's not much to do aside from go to dubstep shows. I mean, for me personally, at least. So I really just go to work and, you know, go home. I don't really chill with my friends. I don't really go out and do things, go to the bar and stuff like that. You know, these are small sacrifices that I make because I know that I'm going to be going to these cool places and I'm going to be having the time of my life later. So I sacrifice now to have fun later. And, you know, when you're working more, you spend less. You know, you work more, spend less. You don't have time to spend money. So that's another just quick tip that I have kind of realized, you know, working more, you spend less. And it's almost kind of common sense. So that is what I mean in regards to sacrificing your time. And what I mean by sacrificing your money really comes down to when you're buying tickets. Because when it comes to buying tickets, you really got to spend to save. Tickets are always going to come out at a cheaper price when they first released at Tier 1. And as the day gets closer, they're going to go up in price, usually up to Tier 4, which can be up to $40 to $50 expensive. And that's not including the fees and taxes that get added to the ticket in the final total. In many cases, people don't like to spend money when the tickets first come out because they're not sure if they want to go or they're not, they don't have money in their bank account. That's going to last them through the week. But I promise you, always buy tickets when they come out in Tier 1 because they're only, you're only going to spend more money later. You know, you're going to be like, yeah, I'm going to get paid, but you're also going to be spending more money. You know, you kind of save more money by spending the money now. Make that sacrifice of, you know, not going, not getting food or not, you know, I don't even know, going out, you will have that money saved on your ticket. And then when your friends are buying tickets two weeks before the show and they're spending twice the amount of money you did, you're going to be happy that you bought your ticket at tier one. I promise you it will pay off in the long run. Spending saves when it comes to tickets. Many festivals nowadays also offer payment or layaway plans, which allow you to pay for your ticket in portions over a couple of months. So if your ticket, say, is $400, the day you buy your ticket, you will put $100 down and then pay $100 for the next three months that is taken out of your bank account automatically until your ticket is paid off. And you can do this for the cost of your entire trip. So that's camping, festival, VIP, the whole shebang. You can pay it off in pieces. And that's going to be my next word of advice is paying off your trip in pieces. Nobody should ever be buying a festival and buying your flight, your ticket, and your hotel 
all in one shot. You want to buy your ticket first because you cannot go to the festival without the ticket. You then want to buy your flight because you cannot go to the festival if you cannot get there. And then you want to buy your hotel because you want to have a nice comfortable place to sleep. But, you know, from my experience, the hotel is not something you need to have if you want to go to the festival. If you really want to go to the festival, you'll go to the festival and figure it out later. I'm dead. I've literally been sleeping on, this, on the rocks on, on my flag. So some ways that you can save money on a flight, come back to the planning, you really have to pre-book and you know you have to get your flight as early as possible. Just like with tickets, the closer the date gets, the more expensive the flight is going to be because seats are going to fill up on that flight because people want to go and the airline companies know that these events are happening and they're going to hike up the price because they know you want to go and will pay whatever it costs to get that flight because you probably already have a ticket and a hotel booked and at this point, you just got to get a flight to go. This is why planning is important. You do not want to get stuck with a cheap hotel and an expensive flight or an expensive flight and a cheap hotel. You should do everything, bing, bang, boom, right after the other and you should not have any gaps in your funding process. If you're a last minute sender like me and you don't know if you can go to the festivals whole last minute because of work related things or things of that nature, these are some tips you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to regarding getting tickets. There's always gonna be a handful of people that have had tickets to the festival for months that cannot go the week of for some emergency, something happens, life kicks them in the ass and they cannot go to the festival or the event and they're gonna to have to sell their ticket. Most of the time, they're gonna be selling their ticket for what they got it for because they just want their money back or they're gonna be selling it for what they got it for and not at a tier four price because the show is either sold out or going for more money. So I highly recommend checking buying and selling groups. There is a ton of buying and selling groups on Facebook for grave tickets in particular. You just have to figure out what they're called in your area. But if you ask around, I'm sure you can find them. There is definitely an online community of ravers that are buying, selling, and trading rave tickets. I've seen it happen because I know it is a thing and I'm a part of the groups. And there are several groups in New York City and I've seen groups for Philly. I'm sure there's groups for Denver. And you know, if not, make one. I made one for New Jersey. It's started picking up but you know there is really a scene out here like that it's all new york city based and the one in new york city has like 15,000 people another great source to check for tickets is on the facebook event page most events will have a facebook event page and everybody going to the event will be in that event page and you'll be able to see who is going and who needs tickets and who lost something and that's a really common place i've seen people go to post things because everybody that is in that group was most likely at the show Another way to save money on tickets is looking into pre-sale or newsletters. Pre-sale usually offers you exclusive access to tier one and sometimes even at a discounted rate. And newsletters sometimes offer discounted rates and discount codes on upcoming events and shows. And the last way you can really finesse festivals is getting involved in work and volunteer programs. Many festivals will need people to work them and volunteer. And rather than paying them in cash, they will give you free access to the festival. And all you have to do is work a will call tent for a day or something like that. Many festivals have people going around the festival, giving out water behind the gates and stuff like that. That is also something. So that is something you want to look into. Many festivals have it on their, you know, uh, on their websites. I'm not 100% sure what it would be, but it's usually something like want to earn free tickets to this show or want to work for this festival and uh you know i haven't done it but i've been you know lost lens i got to see the people that were volunteering and they were just like me you know having a good time they had green shirts and they were giving people water and just having a good time jamming out so definitely something that you want to look into and sometimes they even get paid you know the people that are working for food they get tips and uh you know so it's something you want to look into and a lot of companies hire people for festivals just like seasonal so think about working or volunteering for a festival or event or company that is going to be you know vending at a show and you will probably get free tickets to that show event and maybe even get paid for it now you have your ticket you got to get to the festival somehow right some of you may have the luxury and benefit of being able to drive or uber to and from the festival each day but many of us are going to have to travel long and far and are going to have to take flights so i wanted to give you guys some information on how to save money when traveling via plane again just like with the hotel and with tickets pre-booking your flight will save you so much money because as the date gets closer what is going to happen let me hear you the price is only going to go up so they will charge you whatever you will pay to get there and you're gonna pay it. So make sure that you look in advance and buy flights early because you wanna beat the airlines before they know that there's a special event going on. There are also apps like Hopper, which track and monitor flights to let you know when the cheapest flights are available and let you know when prices increase and drop and suggest the best time to buy the flight at the cheapest price. I have never personally used it, but I watched a video on Cotton Candy Raves and she has a channel about festivals and traveling too. That video almost inspired this video to make a video on how to save money and budget for festivals and trips. So when it comes to places to stay, before you guys look into hotels, I highly recommend looking into airbnb because i've had multiple experiences with them and in every instance i saved so much money and it costed me no more than like 40 bucks i got the whole room 35 dollars free wi-fi access my own bed 
AC. In one instance, I was there by myself. I got dropped off in Baltimore by my, you know, some people that I knew at the time that are now homies, but I wasn't cool with them like that at the time. I didn't want to intrude on their squad on their weekend, so I just had them drop me off at the Airbnb in Maryland. All right, we have made it. We are in Baltimore at the Airbnb, and this is my first time doing this, and it's pretty sick. I stayed there by myself in this person's basement, had the whole place to myself, and they even drove me to the festival for free. So that was cool. And like I said, it cost me 40 bucks. I stayed at an Airbnb for high caliber, and that had like four beds. We had this like upper loft, and we had our own, you know, lock. No one bothered us. So it was sick. You know, most of these times you get private rooms. Sometimes the owner is there, sometimes they're not. But most of the time it's cheap. You get your own key, and, you know, it really is like just like having, a, you know, a hotel. I find Airbnbs good for, you know, smaller groups. They do have Airbnbs that tender to large groups, but uh, I've never really gotten anything crazy like that because I really don't travel and go to these things in large groups, except for camping festivals. And uh, those don't require Airbnb. So we out here. Another word of advice I want to give to you guys, it sounds kind of weird and crazy and far-fetched, but staying with somebody that lives in the area. You know, you go to all these festivals, you travel long and far, and you go to these festivals that are three hours away, but that festival that's three hours away is in someone's backyard. I saw Kyle at Moonrise, and then really like met him through the internet and then saw him at Lost Lands at the meetup. OG from that day, right here, Kyle. We just been tight and yeah, so he's gonna hook it up and we're gonna be staying with him for the weekend. I just think it's always a good idea to hit up people in the area that you know to see if you could stay with them. People that go to school in areas, you know, I have, I have people that go to school in Colorado. Shout out Jess. I still wanna come to Colorado, yo. That's something I've always wanted to do. Go to Colorado and stay with my friends that are in school, you know, that are in universities and just stay with, in their apartment, in their dorms, whatever. We're staying with my homie Kyle, who goes to school out there. Uh, he has a house out there with his housemates. Kyle's crib. What up, guys? That is something else to think about, staying with friends that live in the area. If you don't have any friends that live in the area of the festival and you're really not comfortable with buying an Airbnb or there are no Airbnbs that fit your standard in that area, the best way to go about buying a hotel is buy one room for like six to eight people. I know it sounds crazy, but I've done it every time. You have people that bought the room, go in through the main desk, and then there's always a side or back door entrance where then everybody, we open for them, and then everybody comes in with their stuff, we let them in. Because splitting a room between six to eight people is way cheaper than splitting a room between, you know, four or two, or splitting two rooms between, you know, eight people. You put two people per bed, one person on the floor, an air mattress, one person in the bathroom, and you really just, you know, I'd rather pay 40 bucks for the weekend and sleep on the floor than pay $100 for the weekend and sleep on a bed. You know, I really don't care. I'm going to be so exhausted from the festival. I really don't care where I sleep. You know, the more the merrier. I'd rather be with the squad and you just tend to have more, like, tight, you know, just, like, moments and experiences up late night after the festival in the hotel room. Everyone's just so exhausted and you just, like, pretty much left reality and came back. Oh, oh man. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> And you guys just talk till like six in the morning, you know, you know, crisscross applesauce on the bed and everyone's just staring at the ceiling like what just happened. So, yeah, I always like being in a hotel with a bunch of people. And I found that having, you know, eight people in a hotel room never really gave us any problem, even though it may only say it fits four. You know, no one's going to be doing room checks. So it really is not that big of a deal to have more people in the room than allowed. And most of them don't even care. As long as you're not being disruptive, you know, they don't care. So that is something else that I kind of learned. Um, over the course of time is just be polite, be respectful, and no one's going to give you any problems. Bringing your own food is also very crucial when it comes to saving money. Most festival meals are going to cost you about $10 at least. So if you're going to do that twice a day for three days, that's $60 you spent just on food. $60 worth of groceries gets you food to last you like three festivals. So just keep that in mind when preparing for festivals. And that is really the last bit of information I have on saving money for festivals. It really comes down to planning, preparing, having a goal, and buying in pieces. Don't buy everything at once and, you know, buy everything as soon as you can. As soon as you see it, as soon as you're like, oh, that's the cheapest it's going to be, buy it because you're only going to save money later. It's only going to get more expensive as the date gets closer. In this case, you got to spend to save. That's really the key to finessing festivals is spend money now, rather struggle bus for a couple weeks and enjoy yourself later. That was all the information I have for you guys. I hope it helps. I hope you guys are able to use these tips in your festival endeavors. And I hope you guys can go to more festivals and not break the bank. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments. Drop a like. Subscribe for more. I'm the Festival Finesser. I will see you for more festival-related content and videos. Peace. New Jersey, can I get a year?